Hey, welcome to the Town Hall Academy, episode 129. What choice do you have to help your customers with credit choices? There are many vendor credit options to choose from, and they are great. Now, maybe you don't use them. Maybe you should. In this episode, we are also going to serve up a few other creative programs that you just may implement yourself. No one wants a customer to walk out on a major purchase, especially safety related. Now, this session is here to help you capture more of the big ticket jobs. When an individual's at the counter and, and they're running into a finance problem and it doesn't work with the six month savings cash and they said, no, I'm totally, I have no credit at all. I said, have you considered an M&D loan? Welcome automotive aftermarketers to a Remarkable Results Radio Town Hall Academy. Listen to learn just one thing from today's episode on your journey to remarkable results. Hey friends, Carm Capriato here. So glad to welcome you to Academy episode 129. We have a topic that we have yet to openly discuss here on the Academy. You may just hear a creative financing idea or two that you've not tried yet. Here at the podcast, you know, we care about quality and consistency in our product, just like Jasper Engines does. Now, in addition to the strict quality remanufacturing steps they take at Jasper, they can actually improve a drivetrain's component's original design so that it runs longer and better than when it was new. Check out Jasper's featured engine and transmission pages at jasperengines.com. Hey, if you're a newbie to the podcast, first of all, welcome. I hope you are finding huge value in the Aftermarket's premier podcast. Now, to understand more about what I do, find the trailer on your subscription app. It says trailer and give it a listen. Just over two minutes and I explain the essence of the podcast to you. Like a movie trailer that offers you the highlights of the movie, our trailer is there to also give you a high-level review of our commitment to support your ongoing success as an aftermarket professional. Hey, now, welcome Amy Matnett, auto craftsman in Montpelier, Vermont, and Leon Martin, auto tech services of Rochester, Washington, as they provide you some great perspective on their customer financing options. Find the financing discussion points and my guests' bios on the website, remarkableresults.biz slash A129. You know, you just may hear a financing idea or two that you've never considered, and that is exactly what we do here. Push the envelope on strategies and ideas to help you grow as a leader and build your business. Hear about the acceptance rate of vendor finance programs and a few creative ideas on how to lock your customers with a prepayment plan. Ever do a comparison of buying new versus fixing the vehicle that needs all the work? great ideas here. Have you ever heard of the M&D loan? Well, you're about to. So we're here to talk about creative customer financing options here on the summit for the forever aftermarket student. My goal is to attempt to excite many shop owners to rethink sometimes and not getting a customer to walk out. And, you know, many of our suppliers have programs for us in their banner programs that we can use. But there's a lot of people that say, I like them and it's an option, but we can do other things. And so I, I want I want to uh, be able to excite that. Um, Amy, one of the things you were telling me this week is that you don't you don't like corporate financing programs. I don't like them. The folks that don't have the money, I don't want to to put them down that road where they could go deeper into debt. So they're not, I don't know. I I just, I look at them. I tried it once, didn't like it. And I backed out. I know a lot of people do it. I've talked to a lot of the vendors at different trade shows. I get where they're coming from. And I think for a lot of shops, it works, but consciously, It just made my stomach hurt. And when my stomach hurts, I have to listen to that. And so I don't do it. Let me ask you a question. If they don't have enough room on their credit card or cash in the bank on their debit card to do this transaction, are you going to find that if you run them through a corporate program, they're probably going to fail and that's an embarrassment? Um, I think sometimes it all depends because it's all about their credit. So if they pay their bill all the time, you know, because your, your credit score goes down when you aren't paying things. So as long as they're paying, then they have a decent credit score. So they could conceivably get approved. And I know a lot of shops will tell me that 
their good customers really like this. Well, good customers also have other credit cards. So I've never had a good customer tell me that they they didn't want to do the job because they didn't want to put it on their existing credit cards. Financing options for you, Amy, is not necessarily a really big thing, but it's a small part of making sure you can get these these jobs in-house. I think that as shop owners and service providers, especially because we deal with safety and reliability and keeping the road safe, that we want to come up with ways to help people be able to afford it. And so I don't know if you want me to go into my program now or wait till later. Yeah, let's wait till later. Let's okay. get let's get Leon to chime in on that. Uh, Le- Leon, how do you feel about corporate financing programs? I feel very similar to Amy in the regards to not making it worse for a person. However, I take the positive approach and try to get the people that have the credit, have the money, have the good credit cards to use the corporate financing to help them have space because I use it primarily for larger jobs and I have a very good success track record with it. In other words, I tell the person that uh, this job's going to be $3,500 and and they say, well, can you take credit card? And I said, yes, we can take credit card. However, I also offer six months, same as cash without any fees or finances, if they would have interest in that. And they many times say, yes, I would have interest in that. And I say it takes about two minutes and I qualify or quantify them right on the spot to see if they will do it. And when they when it comes back that they have a three thousand dollar credit or four thousand dollar credit on my new corporate financing card, which we use the Napa Easy Pay, which gives you six months promotional financing and there is no fees, no interest. It costs the person nothing if they can get it paid in less than six months. At the same time, out of the same paragraph of my mouth, I encourage everyone to not use the card unless they can pay it in less than six months because I don't want them to be hit with the fees. And most people realize that right away when you say that, oh, yeah, I I understand that is it's it's terrible interest and so on. And I get that because I don't think they should be having a 29% interest Mm -hmm. on something that's retroactive from the date of purchase. And there's some horror stories you can get into with corporate financing. However, if we're careful with it, and if we recommend it very savvy, like very savvy with our recommendations, I think it could have a place. And I have, and I believe I have found that place where it is effective to my customers. One reason is because my customer base is maybe also we're in the West Coast, but I have an average RO that's that's higher than the average. And that's also a good point with uh, corporate financing. Our average RO is in excess of nine hundred dollars for the, the last five years straight. That being said, I have other options for uh corporate financing, such as Springleaf Financial. And there is a small interest fee attached with that. And that's outside of my uh, jurisdiction. That's all with a an organization here in Olympia, Washington. And they actually make all the judgments and they do the credit check and they do the entire A to Z, so to speak. And I'm out of that equation. Leon, how many times do you go to that option? Uh, I would say that's maybe one in 12 that I go to that. That's a lot, though. It is a lot. Most times I would go to the the Napa Easy Pay and I have about a 76% acceptance rate with that. It's pretty high because I use it on a lot of people that have good credit. Now, tell me about the horror stories that could happen when someone on the uh, the six month plus one day, they totally, totally forgot. I don't know how that happens. And, and now they've got this usurious interest rate. Do they come back and, and cry on your shoulder and all? That has never happened that I'm aware of. The, what I consider the good part is that people come back with the same card and use it over and over again. And they know the program and they know how to pay it on time. 
And when I see the same people using the same card constantly, I know it's working for them because those people are not going to be paying the big interest. They're, they're, they're people that have good credit. Now, there is, a, there, is, you know, there is those situations when a person cannot quantify for any of They have no credit at all. You know, and then there's uh, Napa Easy Pay does not work either. Mm-hmm. So we need to look for other options when that's the case. And then there's, there are individuals, there's times when they're young, have no credit, and they would like to have credit, and it's a good person. And then it takes a second signer. And I've had several, I'd say, I've had quite a few examples of that that has worked well, where they got a parent to sign or an uncle or an out-of-state relative. There's different things like that. Out-of-state relatives have, have uh, they knew the situation and they said they were willing to help. And I explained the whole six-month thing. And so when everybody's on the same understanding of the whole thing, then I feel comfortable going ahead. Can I ask I, a question? Oh, how sure. much how much time does it take you to do all that? Because we're so busy. My whole staff is, you know, running at full tilt boogie. And so how much extra time does it take to stop and then have them fill out all the stuff and you know, especially if they have to then make the phone call and get the uncle and now you got to get more information. Okay. That particular illustration is probably one in 20. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say the other 19, I usually have that all done in less than two minutes. Okay. And while you're on the phone, all I need is a few pieces of information because I already have their name, phone number, and address and all that. Then I just go to the date of birth and their SS number and their approximate income. And if they own or rent, it's like four pieces of information. I get that all within, uh, I'm going to say, 30 seconds. And then I just run the credit check right on this while they're on the phone. And I say, well, you do qualify for $1,800. And uh, since today's job is only $1,100, you can pay as much as you feel prepared to because they might have had $500 for their $1,100 job and they just needed help with the extra $700 mm-hmm. or uh, a $600 or whatever it is. It, it's that kind of situation that uh, then they said, so I can have a choice. I can pay as much as I can. Yes, I said. You just pay as much as you feel comfortable, and then the rest we can put on a balance on this uh, easy pay. But you make sure, make sure that you get this paid in approximately three months. That way, you have another three months as a, a buffer zone in case something happens. Because I don't want them to go over the six months. Yeah, because that's disastrous. So, can I ask sure. another question? So, oh, sure. is this all done online? So, while you're talking to the customer on the phone. Yeah. The yes. service advisors right there online with it up on their screen, right. filling it all out, and bam, I'll have the answer. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. I think when I did it, oh, I'm going to date myself here. 20 years ago, um, it was a very long process. They had to fill out the paper form. We had to call it in. So um, it makes sense that it would be much faster now. Yes, it's much faster. And I like to have it all done. In le- and I tell the person on the phone, I should be able to check this out in less than two minutes. Do you have the time for two minutes? And most times the answer is yes. <clears throat> and so, and I just get right into it. And uh, they moved it from 90 days to six months, which is a lot better because the 90 days, same as cash, is just too small a window mm-hmm. and too big a trap. It's more like a mouse trap. And the six months, I just feel is just so much fair, more fair. And it's, there's a minimum of $199. I think we all know that. Plus the big caveat, and this is the big one. If they use the easy pay card, it puts the warranty up to 33 year 36 instead of the two year 24. But that's just with Napa. That's with anything you do to the car, whether it's Napa parts or Napa or whatever, but it is with Napa's program. Right, right. right. So curious, I wonder, because I don't know, and I don't know if anybody online has the answer, with uh, a program that you see at one of the trade shows that's an independent program, do they have any kind of warranty that go with their program? Uh, I do not know the answer to that question, Amy. However, I uh, I just know the, the Napa Easy Pay. Mm-hmm. Uh, they use the Synchrony financial card and uh, Synchrony, I think, is one of the independents that's out there. But I don't I doubt whether it changes the warranty on your services. Yeah. So anybody in Facebook land, if you're using it, um, if you have the answer to that, 
I think that would be a nice thing to know because not everybody's in Napa Auto Care. One other big positive on this is if it's a, it's a young 18-year-old person and they're trying to establish credit, 21 years, whatever they are, doing that six months, same as cash with easy pay with a co-signer helps them establish their own personal credit. And it's one additional, big additional thing that's, that's in their favor. So I, I always like to look for good people that need credit mm-hmm. and get mm-hmm. started. That's, that's well, you're, you're turning my mind here a little bit because um, I just have my 20 years ago thought pattern and haven't looked at it th- since. Um, so I also wonder if ASA has a program and AASP. I mean, that might, they may be member benefits for folks to look at too, I would think. I That's a possibility. You're right. you're right, Amy. Let me let me tell you my takeaway of these first few minutes here. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, let me tell you something that many people may not know. Leon's in a town of about 2,300 with an average ARO of 900. And in my opinion, you are the financing guy in that market. <laughs> he, it, it, what, what I've taken away is that Leon wants to do anything he could possibly do to be sure somebody's got that safe and reliable vehicle and, and, the, and the work gets done. And he's mm-hmm. offered them an opportunity not only to pay for it over time. I love the, the, the six month program. It, it's the right thing. You're right, Leon. But it, but but, uh, uh, but also helps establish credit in some ways. You you may be the first person that helps someone out, a, a young person. That's very possible. And in addition to that, I also sometimes when I see it's a hard pressed case, and and they're trying to do their calculation, they're talk to their wife, or maybe they're in the shop at the counter. Uh, I don't know if we can make that in six months. When I see them hedging on that six month. I say, would 12 months make the difference? And they say, oh, yes, if it's 12 months, we could easily do it. Then I tell them, well, for an additional fee, if I could get a 12-month payment for you for a small fee, uh, then I will ask them that question. If they say a positive response to that, then I will explain to them how much an additional fee, what that means. Because at that point, I can do the same thing with a 12 month program and I just with a small fee, let's say $80 or whatever for the fee and divide it up into 12 months, maybe like seven bucks a month <clears throat> that adds to it. But that way I can give them this 12 months, same as cash. Does that fee go to the financing company? Not you, right? That is my fee for doing the work. I do the work because I'm paying for the 6%. That's what it costs me to get 12 months, same as cash. Okay. Okay. So you have a you have a fee in it. You're you're charging the customer. You're getting oh, that's that's perfect. That's exactly what you should do. Yes. And if the person quits paying, say six months down the road, they're just like you know their car got in an accident and died, and they're just like I'm not paying it. Uh, do you get penalized or? No. Okay. No, I have my money two days. You know, just like typical. So it's it's all clean up front. And if if something happens six months, and they probably have other major things in their life too that they're upside down in as well. It's not just Mm -hmm. this one card. I try to try to be conscientious and try and make the best judgment at the best time for the best thing for their life, because I'm all about helping them keep their vehicle. And this comes back to maybe the original concept, why my, my AROs are where they are is because I believe that too much of the American public is taught too much of the wrong thing as far as replacing vehicles. Now, if you're in a rust belt, it's probably will not apply to what I'm going to say right now. But for the most part, most vehicles are disposed of at one third their life. In my area, I tell my customers, I have the big chart on the wall. If they follow my recommendations and advice, they should be able to take it to three to 400,000 miles before it needs to be disposed of. And the average car we get in the shop is 125,000 miles on. You know, it's it's just a one third car at that point. So if they are willing to go to 250 instead of 125, it makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of doing service because my method will keep the most money in their pocket. If all my recommendations, I believe they will have the most in the long run. And part of that is keeping their vehicle. And part of that is keeping it maintained. And part of that is the necessary repairs which means no extra sales tax on the other vehicle. And this goes back to my plain paper thing. Is this the right time to talk about that? I'm not sure. 
No, it's not. But you have set us up so wonderfully, Liana. A vehicle is more than just transportation. It's what we depend on to move our most precious cargo, our families. As a service professional, you provide routine maintenance for your customer's vehicle, but what do you do if the engine, transmission, or differential fails? Contact Jasper, of course. Jasper provides your customers with a cost-effective alternative to purchasing a different vehicle. Quality, remanufactured products from Jasper Engines and Transmissions carry a nationwide warranty with up to three years, 100,000 miles parts and labor coverage. Get your customers back on the road fast as Jasper offers immediate availability through two distribution centers and a network of 45 branch locations nationwide. If a new vehicle is not in your customer's budget and the engine or transmission in their car, truck, van, or SUV has given its last performance, a remanufactured drivetrain component from Jasper Engines and Transmissions will provide them with many years of trouble-free driving at a cost many times less than that of a new vehicle. For customer satisfaction, choose Jasper. I really wanted to ask Amy uh, if you've ever gotten over the fact that you used to hold paper in back in the day. And with uh, all the financing options that are out there today, yes. you would never recommend that, would you? No. I, I'm in the Rust Belt. So um, there's such a there's so many things you have to think about with each customer their their vehicle what kind of shape it's in um kind of like what their finances are there's there's a lot for us to think about to help guide them correctly that is Ye- that is true yeah years I, ago one, one I, vehicle from vermont <laughs> yes <laughs> i yeah. had one vehicle from vermont and i advised the owner <laughs> get rid of it because they needed the brakes fixed on it and it was not really possible to fix the brakes on it. Yes, yes. We get quite quite uh, very good at uh, torches and welding in Vermont, experts at it. Um, so years ago, I, you know, I, I, I feel for people because that's what we do. We, we again, we keep them safe and reliable. Uh, we are a car hospital. And so when someone comes in for care, I want to take care of them. And so years ago, I came up with a payment plan And I would really think about who I was offering it to and they had to be a good customer. I had to trust them and we would have a paper they would fill out where they would, um, we give them three months and they had to pay a third up front, a third in a month and then a third. And they either got to uh, do it where they wrote us checks with today's date on it and we put sticky notes on it and I put them in the safe because I'm trusting them. They're going to trust me. I'm not going to cash that check. Or we would say we'd have them fill out their credit card and give us permission to do it. And that worked pretty good. But the downfall of it is my service advisor started using it as um, being able to sell jobs. And January, February, March, my slow month of the year when there's no cash flow, all of a sudden I'd have like eight of them, I'd be like, honey, I can't pay the bills. We don't have enough money to pay for the parts. You got to quit doing this. So at this point, maybe I'll do one or two a year the most, but I'm the only one that gets to decide whether we're going to do it or not. And so you want me to go right into my VIP program? Yeah, and you replace that. Yeah. Yeah. So I replaced it and I was at a conference, I'm going to say 15 years ago, and there was this guy, Tim Rausch. I think that's his name. Give him all the credit. He was from either South Dakota or North Dakota. He had a two-man shop, him and his business partner. They were the technician service advisors. Fascinating model, the way he ran it. And he came up with this VIP program where he would have people pay forward. So it was a budget plan. And so they got to pick whether they were going to pay $50, uh, 75, 150, 200, what they wanted to pay per month. And they gave you all their credit card information and they signed the paper that said they give you permission to do it. And then they get a 10% credit on that amount. So if you charge their credit card $5 a month, you give them a $5 credit, $5 a month, $5 credit. And we just add up over time and they could use it. So if they had a family, like I have a family of five and they do 200 bucks a month. And so then anybody in that family can come in and they have a credit on account. So they, 
it's, we call it the bank of Amy. It's kind of a, a joke, but I've got about 15 customers who are use, uh, using it and they love it. And they're able to save up for their tires or if they know a big job is coming down the road, it's part of their budget. So it doesn't come out of their pocket. And that has been a beautiful thing. We've been doing it about five years now. And I've done it long enough that I have a separate bank account over here where I have enough money in it that if everybody in the whole program decided they wanted out, I could go over here and take that money out and pay everybody back just what their credit card was charged. They don't get their credits back because I've had two people move away. So I, they had a little bit left over and I wrote them a check and off they went. And so because that money's sitting there, now every month when I charge their credit cards, I can either put it, I, I put it into my equipment fund over here so that when I need to buy a new lift or any kind of equipment or there's, you know, something that happens and I need cash quick, it's just sitting here growing. And then January, February, March, my slowest months of the year because it's below zero, I just put it right into the checkbook and I got that extra cash flow that I can utilize to keep the shop going. So I call it a win-win for the shop, win-win for the customer. It's been a beautiful, beautiful thing. They're getting 10% on their money. They're paying mm -hmm. ahead. Mm -hmm. And in the, in the case of five vehicles at 200 a month, that, that's all going to be consumed during the year. Yes. Okay. I love it. Yeah, they do too. It, and it was, it sat on my desk, I swear, for 10 years. And I kept looking at it and I was just like, you know, this is a great idea. But how the heck do you like even approach people? So I wrote, a, I do a monthly new, well, it used to be monthly. Now it's like every six months because I'm too busy. Periodically, I'll just do a, a snail mail newsletter. And I wrote about it and I included the, um, the form that they would fill out. And I said, if anybody's interested, come and talk to me. And immediately, like five people signed up that day. And then over time, I have about 15, 15 to 20 people is the average. And I don't push it. I just wait until, you know, I hear the right person talk or periodically I'll throw it out in a newsletter. It just kind of, you know, organically grew. You know what I love about it? And I, let me connect Leon's theory of taking your car from half-life to almost full life it's almost like the VIP program lends itself to the longevity of the vehicle. Yeah. So it's really got to be that right person who understands that they're not the person who's going to, you know, get a new car every three years. They're the person that really gets it. Leon. Do yes. You have a question. And I've done the same thing, what you call the VIP. Mm -hmm. It's a, they sign a form and you, you debit their, you, you, you ding their credit card every first of the month. Mm -hmm. and the reward for them was 10% uh, off the entire bill. It, I think it was one of my larger uh, discounts. And that was like a $400 a month ding. Ooh, ooh that's but, too much. <laughs> no, I had, I had the chart there and the customer would choose. And most of them chose the highest numbers because it was the bigger discount. And it was providing, especially for the, where they have a fleet, you know, and you can start taking a, a X amount of dollars per month. And uh, yes, I've done that same thing. I do not do it here in the West Coast because so far I, I haven't needed to do that. Uh, I have other things in my hip pocket that I use as well. But, but that is a good one, Amy. I, I totally support that. And I've done that in the past and it works. Yeah. And it, it also, it, it helps build, build loyalty. It does. And yeah. it, cause you're creating a relationship with someone built on trust. That's right. Which is really what we're all trying to do all the time. Right. So one of the things I do is on their, on our point of sales by their last name, we just put VIP. So every time the service advisors pull up their name, they'll immediately see it. And then they're like, oh, and then we really play it up. Oh, you're the VIP and they get the best loaner car and they get the best scheduling. I mean, we really kind of put that they're, you know, they are VIP of the shop and it, and they've become my best advocates for bringing in new customers. I mean, you look at the VIP people, they're the ones that bring most of the referrals in because we have a special relationship. That's right. Yeah. 
that's really good. I, I like that. Dedicated, but, yeah. loyal. Uh, they'll hang their shingle on you. That's where you know the, the, no one for a cheap break program down the road is going to pull them away. That, that's the key. I have this one guy that we see him once a year. And it, he does 75 bucks a week. And he does his own oil changes. And he gets his tires done at the cheap place. But when he is ready to make sure his car is ready for winter, he brings it in. And he's probably got $1,000 in the bank of Amy. And he's like, do it all. $75 a month. Not so, a, yep. Not a week. Okay. Okay. The Bank of Amy. I love that. Okay. <laughs> I may need a loan. I don't call that out loud. I may, That's I may just have kind of to call you someday. inside joke. Leon, the M&D loan. Um, fascinating the way you actually gave it a name and how you work it in the business. Explain to us. When an individual's at the counter and, and they're running into a finance problem and it doesn't work with the six months savings cash and they said, no, I'm totally, I have no credit at all. I said, have you considered an M&D loan? And they say, what's that? I said, mom and dad. Well, I've done that already. And, you know, the typical response is that they've kind of already drained that. Occasionally, it's not drained. And sometimes I will say, well, if the M&D doesn't work, do you have a good relationship with your parents? And they say, oh, yeah, yeah, we get along great. Well, I said, would your parents have any interest in signing for you? on the six month promotional. And then this is a way to build back your credit. And then usually there's a positive thing there. That's also sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's just all kinds of things. One thing that I also, it's more of the thing in the past because there's not many people do checks anymore, but when they did do checks, I would often take payment checks. They write them all at one time at the counter. Yeah, like my payment plan. Yes, yeah, so like your payment plan. So mm -hmm. they they can only pay half the bill now, and then the, maybe the the remaining fifty percent we would split up in three checks or something like that, and they post date them, and then I had a little code on the back of the check where you sign it or stamp it. I have HT, which means hold till, and I put the date there so that the secretary or the person depositing the check never deposits the check. If any accident happened that they did and the check bounced, I paid the cost. So, and I've done that several times because there was a mis mistake on depositing it. But I've done hundreds of checks like that. And with, with a, I'm going to say 100% success, mm -hmm. very, very near 100%, worked really well. But that's not much of a test anymore because there's very few people in the West Coast that have a checking account. It's yeah, credit cards. In Vermont, we're, we're at least five years behind you. And I would say 50% of my customers still write checks. Okay. Yeah. No, we, we, we deposit very, very few checks. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had to go as, as deep as aunt and uncle or brother and sister to get any money? Oh, yes. Yes. I've had lots of examples of that. They're, because we live in a reservation area and lots of times our Native Americans, they do lots of they do almost 100% with cash. So they're having uncles and relatives that cough out of the woodwork constantly to helping each other. So that that happens, yes. This this whole show was designed around creative financing and I think we've heard it. I mean, this is really good. I've got another one yet and that is prepaying. You know, I had a minivan sitting here for six months. She needs an engine and I said, well, you can start, we can do prepayments a while, you know, we can start working on that. You mean you, I can leave my car here? Yes. I said, I have the space and you just deposit what you can. And then as, as you get more and she did that and she just followed her deposits and deposits and deposits. She finally had her whole engine prepaid within, uh, I'm going to say in less than a year, it was kind of all done and she's ready to go ahead and do it. And so this week, actually, we finished up on it. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So we couldn't do that on the East Coast. It would rot. Wouldn't be able to move it. The brakes would be completely fried together. But that's that's cool. But my question, Amy and, and Leon, how does she survive without her vehicle? The average person has about 2.7 vehicles. So. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. <laughs> yeah. Or if she was in town, she could Uber it. There's, there's more alternatives for people these days. So there's no Uber uh, in our town. We have one. 
it's funny that you have like two rural people. The, well, I'm in the state capital of Vermont, 8,000 people. Okay. So uh, I get it. And uh, that's not the largest cities. And Burlington is larger, right? Oh, yeah. Burlington's way bigger. Also offer to the people can leave their vehicle if they, you know, if they don't have enough of money. And this has worked, I'm going to say many times, many, many times. They have a $3,000 expense or whatever, and they can only pay 2000 And they are kind of like shocked that I would offer. I said, no, you can leave it here. I said, it's fine. And you can prepay it. As, you could pay it when you can. Oh, okay. If I can do that, yeah, let's go ahead. So they want me to go ahead with the job, knowing that they're not going to pick it up until it's totally paid, but they're going to pay, I like to see it, a 60 to 70% window paid so that I feel it's going to be a bona fide transaction on the whole thing. And that works quite well. You're, you have a gate around your place so yeah. they can't get in and take it. That's right. It's all, it's all, yes. and that's another thing in the West Coast. Everybody is fenced and gated as yes. though it's just the normal way of life. Right. So yeah. shop owners out there, if you, if you aren't gated, because we've done that a couple times and every night we pull the car into the shop just so there's no temptation, mm-hmm. you know, so you do have to be very strategic and protect the shop when you're right. trying to decide, can you use any of these strategies? Right. That's right. And some people would not have the space for that. And some shops are very tight on space. Even in the West Coast, they're very tight. But we are not. We have lots of space here. So it, it works well. Is Cash King? You know, we, we, we have a lot of customers who pay cash. And they always kind of smile and say, do I get a discount because I'm paying cash? And I always smile and say no. Um, so I know there are shops that will do that. Um, I think you, you you're... Why would you do that unless you were being sneaky and not running it through the books? You know, you should do it right because it'll bite you if you don't. I know some shops that would give, if they gave a discount, it would be because of a debit card, not cash. Cash, they have a 2% surcharge. Because oh, it's, it's really? A pain to deal with cash. Uh, I never felt that way, but I know some of the younger crowd. Some of the really good, strong shops, they do not want cash Mm -hmm. because it's a lot of temptations with cash, a lot of other, it takes a physical drive to the bank to make it go away. That's true. And it costs you money to take cash. And if you get a lot of cash, you should have a safe tucked away where nobody can see it. So if you were broken into, it's not going to disappear. Right. I mean, again, being strategic is nowadays... Uh, we got broken into this, um, this spring first time ever. And the guy hit 12 different businesses, a lot of shops. And my shop was the only one that didn't lose anything because we have an alarm and cameras. And it, we actually saw the thief on camera. It was like the funnest thing ever. Cause then the alarm came off. He like was, Wah! and then he ran out and, um, off he went. So we didn't lose anything. And we actually then got him on film and gave it to the cops and helped them find him. But 11 other places, they lost equipment or money or different things because they had no security. Good stories. I love it. Can you share with us, Leon, your white sheet tactic? My white sheet tactic comes into play whenever there is a large expense. I'm talking about maybe two to $8,000 in that window is usually when I pull this out because I, I usually pull out the white sheet when they say, well, you know, the vehicle is not worth it. And then it becomes a judgment call. Is the vehicle worth repairing or is it just my opinion or is it his opinion? And then I will, if I feel it's worth it, and if the technician and I feel it's worth it, then this is what I do. I said, well, I said, I would not want you to spend any money on this vehicle if you don't like it. Oh, I love the vehicle. Well, if they do love the vehicle, then let me tell you how to think about it. That's when the white sheet of paper comes out. After I get that single question asked, do you like the vehicle? If the answer is yes, then the simple thing is let's pull out a white sheet of paper and put one, two, three right down the side. If you were getting rid of this vehicle because of the the engine's bad transmission or whatever it all is, what kind of vehicle would you replace it with? And then they would tell me either a new vehicle or a late model used or 
a five-year-old or eight-year-old, whatever the number is, I try to get them to estimate the cost of this vehicle. As soon as they give me the, the cost of it, they will say, no, I'll, I'll probably just get a used one, a 15000 or 20000 or whatever. So if it's a $20,000 vehicle they're planning to get to trade this other one in or buy it outright, however they do it, then in our state, we have sales tax. And if your state has sales tax, that's the first number I put down. Number one is the sales tax expense. And in my state, it's approximately 10%. So the $2,000 on the $20,000. So I'm going to write down $2,000 for the white piece of paper. That's one single expense that's going to come out of our pocket and nobody wins. I don't get any of it. You don't get any of it. Your wife doesn't get any of it. Your family doesn't get any of it. It goes to the fishing pool somewhere, those people that use it. <laughs> Number two is the insurance differential on the old Betsy that's here in the shop that needs an engine. I don't know how much insurance you pay a year on this and how much it's going to take to put insurance on your $20,000 purchase. But typically it's a thousand dollars a year more. So if it is a thousand dollars a year more in a three year window, and that's how I tried to help everybody look at their vehicle as a three year decision. If you allow me to help you with the vehicle, I want to bring it up to a three year drivability condition. So let's talk about $3,000 on an insurance differential underneath the $2,000 sales tax expense. Now, Understand so far we have $5,000 that's additional monies that comes out of your family fund that nobody gets to retain or hold. Number three, there is a depreciation factor and you can decide how much that is, Mrs. Smith, because I can't really tell you, but I know for a minimum, it's probably a minimum of $2,000 a year on this purchase. If you buy $20,000 something, it's going to depreciate at least six thousand dollars in three years would we all agree yes so now looking at these numbers i give them the sheet of paper i want you to take this home talk it over with your significant other and see if you still are of the mindset to go out and buy another twenty thousand dollar vehicle because at that point almost everybody will say this some statement that goes like this wow mm -hmm. i never thought about that well, this is money that's yours, and it's money you need to part with to make this decision. So at that point, they say, well, then maybe I should go ahead. Well, I said, I don't think we should go ahead and put an engine in this car until I look it over. Let me do the rest of it, a thorough inspection, because I don't want you to be six months down the road and need another $1,500 that you were not expecting. So at that point, I have buy-in that we want to do a, a real health assessment in this car, and many times you will find an additional two to $4,000 worth of work the car should have in addition to the major catastrophic thing that we were just discussing. So you add the whole thing up and now you have an $8,000 venture rather than a $4,500 venture. You see where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you have buy-in for the $8,000 decision. This is why it takes creative financing to make all these things happen. And that's why I use Spring Leaf Financial and other choices and things. But this is also one of the reasons you have a high average RO because you do everything right one time and gives the best to the customer in the long run. How many times a year would you do the white paper thing? Uh, I'd say it's about twice a month. Okay. Wow. Uh, I do, do they, what's the close rate? Uh, it's probably 90, 95%. Uh -huh. Do you, are you the only one that does it or have you trained your staff to do it also? I train my sons to do it. They, they are my staff. So, okay. <laughs> so yes, they do it as well. Okay. I, I took notes. That's brilliant. Good, good notes. It's brilliant. And, but I, I also have to say that Leon has a, style and a personality and a calmness to him mm -hmm. that I really think if someone uh, listens or watches this and says, hey, I can do this, try to mimic the Leon's approach. It's soft. It's it's nice. It's calming. And it, to me, um, 
it, it's almost like, oh, it's, it's my old wise uncle telling, giving me some great advice. Well, he's not selling. No, he's no. not selling. He's yeah. giving the information. He's saying, I want you to look at the whole picture, exactly. kind of just like we do when we give them the um, the assessment of after we looked it over is the, you know, it needs brakes, it needs struts, it needs a tune up, it needs new tires, but the foundation is solid. We feel it's worthy of investing in. What do you want to do? And you're just taking it a next step forward is, oh, have you ever thought of it this way? So it's, that's why it works is because he's not selling anything. That's so right. Given the information exactly. so they can make an informed decision. Excellent. Right. Excellent. Hey, um, is there anything we didn't cover? Uh, pre-purchasing. I do this sometimes. Uh, they, they want to do so and so and so, but they don't have all the money that's going to take an $800 job, let's say. I said, you can actually start making prepayments right now. And they looked me in the eye, shocking. You mean, yeah, I said, right now, you mean $50 or whatever it is you want to put down per week. I said, then when we get up there to the, where you feel you can finish it off, I said, then it's all done. So that is one other, we don't do that very often, but occasionally we'll do that. Well, it's, it's another tool in the toolbox. Mm-hmm. Well, cool. All right. Well, then, uh, you know, in the show notes, we'll make sure that on the show page when we release this episode next Thursday, all these great tactics will be there. So if anyone wants to sit down with their team and ultimately say, what what can we do? How can we, um, you know, let, let's grow our sales and let's grow our average repair order with with some really great strategies on customer financing. Hey, Amy, Matt Nat, uh, Auto Craftsman, Montpelier, Vermont. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. And Leon Martin, Auto Tech Services, Rochester, Washington. Thanks for being here, man. My pleasure. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time.